Hey, I hope you're doing well. So we're on the 17th day of July and the days are running. I hope you've been sipping on the word of God because that is the whole purpose why I am doing a daily meditation and sharing of his word so that we build up our faith and grow in strength. And talking about faith, we've talked about how faith is a gift from God, talked about what comes out of that faith. And today I want us to talk about how to exercise that faith. And I would like to take us to a scripture in the Old Testament which as I read it, I realized that it has some how-tos on exercising our faith. Let's read from Joshua 1 verse 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to it all that Moses tells you to do. Well, let's break it down. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. This book of the law, the holy book, right? The Bible, the word of God, which means we have to know it, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if the word of God is the Bible, then everything that is in the Bible, we have to know it because reading the Bible is um, getting accustomed to God's voice. As we read, we hear God speak to us, right? So firstly, to exercise our faith is getting to know the word of God because our faith comes from this word. If we don't know it, how can our faith be strong? Then he goes further to say, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. That is our next focus, out of your mouth. After you've known the word of God by hearing it and reading it, then you have to let this word of God, what you've learned and what you've heard, you have to let it govern your speech. The Bible says that the power of life and death are in the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Words make words. Even God, look at God. God created the, the paradise of Eden through his words. Why can't we also create paradise with our words? How we speak, what we speak is very important in growing our faith. Next it says, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Meditate means to ponder. To ponder means to think about carefully, having it on repeat over and over and over again in our minds until it becomes part of us. The Bible says to incline your ears to the sayings of God and keep them in the midst of your heart. So when you meditate, you let it become part of you and what is inside of you then flows out. Let's move on. But you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to it. You know what they say, practice what you preach, do what you say, right? That is what is intended here. Jesus encouraged his disciples to do what their teachers taught them, but warned them against copying and adopting the behaviors of their teachers. What do we learn here? We learn that um, even when you learn the word of God from your spiritual leaders, it is that word of God that should guide the walk and not the actions of your teachers or spiritual leaders because their actions can sometimes be off rhythm, right? And if you copy their actions, then you fall out of rhythm as well. So in a nutshell, you have to put into practice or you have to do that which you speak about, that which you've heard and learned and that which you've meditated upon, right? And then another way to grow our faith is through prayer. Prayer is a form of communication with God, right? After you've dwelled in the place of meditation, you are filled with the word of God and it literally translates into you uh, standing in awe of God. Jesus taught us about praying and he gave this sample prayer, the very first line which says, our Father who art in heaven. You see that it teaches us, first of all, acknowledging uh, the sovereignty of God. And so when you study the word of God, it teaches you about God. And as you are consumed about this magnificent creator, you kind of like submit yourself, you humble yourself before him. And part of that humility is first acknowledging his sovereignty, right? And then you give him his praises, and then you bring your supplications, your petition, and then you ask him to teach you, to open your eyes, give you wisdom, bring you enlightenment, and so on. So prayer comes from a place of meditation. And don't forget, the Bible instructs us to pray 
at all times. Prayer is not for particular times. Prayer is not only for sad people, troubled people. Prayer is for both happy people and sad people and for all times. One other way through which we can grow our faith is by getting together with other Christians and discussing what we have learned, what we've heard about the Word of God. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling together. When we get together as believers, you know, we exhort one another, right? Provoking love unto good works. These are acts of love born out of the Word of God that we have learned. So you see that the Word of God then motivates you to encourage other believers in Christ. And attached to that point is also sharing the Word of God like what I'm doing now. It is a command that we have in the book of Matthew chapter 28. It says to go ye into the world and teach all nations, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever that I have commanded. And as my last point in this video, I'll say that our faith grows when we let it influence the choices and the decisions that we make. And for you to do that, it means you really have to trust in the word. The Bible says that trust in the Lord with all your heart. If you don't trust in something, you cannot use it right. And so for you to base every decision of yours according to the word of God, it means you trust the word of God. May the Lord strengthen us to obey his word and to put his word into practice so that our faith will grow. Even if you have faith as little as a mustard seed, it will move mountains. So may the Lord strengthen you and I as we're determined to grow in our faith. Have a happy July.